Well, hello there. It's Sandy and welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to be painting rain. I have this really cute stamp set from Mama Elephant called Chance of Rain and I stamped it onto some Arches watercolor paper. It's really good high quality watercolor paper and you're going to see the difference that it makes in coloring this background. I took some masking fluid and ran it around the inside edges of each of the stamped images. And what that's going to do is create a little barrier in between the sky and the image so that I can be a little freer and messier with my, my sky painting and be able to, to paint right up to that edge. I did let it dry for quite a while before I started painting, so you don't want to paint on this while it's wet. So I'm adding a lot of water in this and arches can take a whole lot of water with watercolor. It, it's really fabulous paper. I really like it a lot. And I'm adding water first and then putting color over top of it. I'm starting with a really light blue and I'll add some other layers of other colors. And the paint set that is off camera there is the Koi Sketchbox. And it's <clears throat> one of many watercolor sets that I have. I, I like a lot of different ones for different reasons and I thought I'd try and see what this looked like on this Arches paper. One of the things I did find is that uh, as I painted layers and layers, I'm adding a darker blue on this now, as I painted the layers, they just kept blending into each other. I'm, I'm not used to like the Arches paper because I usually use the less expensive stuff for card making and I found that it actually blended way better than I expected it to. So that was kind of cool and challenging at the same time. So I had been using a larger brush, I think it was a number eight, and then I switched to this number four and I made it a thirsty brush. Thirsty means it's going to absorb the water and the color. So I'm off camera down below there, I'm just wiping it in between each stroke to make it so that the, the brush is going to pull color out of the paper and create some some really really subtle stripes but what I kept seeing as I was watching this go on is the paper really blends the color so well that it almost kept erasing the lines that I was creating they were they were much stronger when I would start and then it would disappear as I as, as I kept watching it it was just kind of interesting that there are some papers when you get a good quality paper it really wants to help you blend so if you're having trouble with your watercolor looking kind of blobby, try some expensive watercolor paper sometime. You know, if you can buy just one sheet of it at a local art store or if your craft store carries some nice stuff, try it and see what happens because it's interesting to see the difference that any kind of paper can make. So next I wanted to add layers of darker color and I'm adding that in a little more specific stripes. So I'm, I'm trying to keep them even. If you're coloring rain in whatever medium you're using, it's most helpful if you keep all the rain going the same direction at the same angle. If you have rain blowing sideways, you want it to all blow the same direction sideways. So my rain here is just gently falling vertically from the sky, which is what I wish would happen outside of my house because it's ridiculously dry here where I live. We've had a dry, dry, dry summer and I'm really looking forward to the fall, although I know everybody's going to chide me when in the winter I'm complaining about how bad the, the long, uh, long wet fall is going to be because in the Pacific Northwest where I live, it's definitely, we, we have long, long, long wet winters, but at this point, I will take it because I really, really, really want to see some green again. Everything here is turning brown. So I'm alternating between the thirsty brush and pulling color out and adding kind of whitish stripes and adding more blue color. And here I'm adding a very, very light blue underneath of the umbrella because the umbrella would be blocking out the rain, but you would see some sky behind it and it might get a little bit darker as it gets toward the ground at the bottom. I'm going to be adding more green in the, the ground at the very bottom, but one of the things I wanted to add was some splatters to this. And I'm not really good at splatters, but I remembered when my little friend Penny came to see me, and she is really good at splatters. She has a very specific technique that she uses, and I wanted her to show you her technique, and then I'm gonna give it a shot 
as soon as I get back. So let's go take a look at what Miss Penny has for us. Oh, it's so good to see you! Yay! Are you ready to paint with me? Yeah. Yeah, come on, let's sit up on the chair here. There we go. All right, so you tell me what we have to do to do the splatters. You gotta get your paints first, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a piece that I did, and I would love for you to do splatters for me on that. Okay, so... This is one, this is the new mark cut. It's probably need to keep the eyes open so I can get them out. You got lots of different sizes in there. That's pretty cool. Some that aren't the right size. Oh, there's some that aren't right? You'll have to show me what makes it the right size. This is the right size. So it has to be like a medium size, not a little baby size. So I cut the googly eye with my pink scissors. Then I take the thing out. Okay. Then I need the brush and some There's your brush and here's some water. Put it in the water. Then I choose the color. You want this color, so you get to make sure there's enough paint. Then you just put the paint, just do this to get it going. So how far do you have to fill it with paint? Lots of paint or a little bit of paint? Lots, so I didn't get enough paint, so I'll do it again. So I'll do this. Now I'll try. Oh yeah, that looks better. There's more paint now. And so the paint's going in. There's enough, and now I'll need to get the, the, this in. More water? Yep. Do you fill it all the way up or just a little ways? Just a little ways. And then you just... Okay, can we show the camera what that looks like? So that's how full it is. Okay, so now what do you do? You look like this. <gasps> wow! So you, you want it kind of put up. That is amazing, Penny. Thank you so much for showing that to me. You're welcome. And now it's my turn to try Penny's technique. She left one of her googly eyes for me so I could practice on my painting. And here we go. I decided I was going to cut off the little googly eye just like she did and then start filling it with paint. And what I did find is that my, my little hand had a harder time getting in there with the paint than hers did. You know, as much as she was struggling to try to get enough paint in there, I had an oops here where I splattered because I just, I don't know, brushed my brush against the back of the googly eye. And then I was struggling to try to figure out what the consistency would be to make this work. What I should have done was practice on a scratch piece of paper before doing it on my painting because look what happened. I got really giant dots instead of the little tiny splatters and hers made a little clicky noise when she'd squeeze it and I had to kind of shake it to get the paint out and yeah. It was a fail. Even though I liked how it came out in the long run, it didn't work as well as when Penny did it. So she's a genius and I need more practice at this obviously. But I'm going to add uh, or take away, shall I say, the masking fluid by using a rubber cement pickup and that just prevents pressing really hard with my fingers which would get grease kind of into the paper and make it a little harder for me to paint on top because grease will act like a resist. So the rest of this I'm going to just be painting while I chat with you. I started by just painting the base color on a lot of these parts of the image and I was trying to add some shading as I went and decided since this paper does make it blend a whole lot then I would wait a little longer I'd move around the image and paint some other areas and then go add some shading later into these jackets because I really wanted to but it was just it was just not working because this paper makes it makes the colors want to blend really well which is a good thing and yet we just need to work work on how to make that happen when our colors are blending before we're ready for them to totally blend. 
and there was one area in that upper left of the umbrella that had some splooji paint in it so I just covered that with a dark green so that I have my little rainbow of the umbrella above them and my patrons on my patreon page are getting a Copic version of this very same card with the rainy sky if you would like to see the rainy sky done in Copic markers you can either join up as a patron on my patreon page or you could take the Copic backgrounds class on my website you can look in my store and there's also a link in the description down below Alrighty, so here is the finished card, which I love how this came out. It's a one layer card, and I did add glossy accents onto the jackets. You can't quite see it, but all three jackets have a layer of glossy accents to make them all shiny little slickers that these kids are wearing, the kids and the little bear. And here's a couple other videos. If you're interested in watercolor, I thought these would be ones you might enjoy. Haven't shared links to these in a while, so you may have missed them if you're a new subscriber. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking a few minutes out to watch my video. I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye-bye.